ICM's new B26 Marauder is an awesome thing and I've started to build it. Find out how I got on right here on Gary Stuff. Hi there, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Today, I'm starting the build of ICM's brand new B26 Marauder in 148 scale. Now, it's a huge project, so I've split the whole thing into three. Today is the first of the videos, and I will take you through the build of the whole of the fuselage, your cockpit, bomb bays, all the turrets, all the interiors, stuff like that. In the next video, you'll be able to see me building the wings and the engines and the undercarriage and essentially finishing the build of the model. And then in the third episode, you'll see me do the paint and also put it onto a display stand with some interesting graphics and also some figures, which I hope you'll like. If you do like the show, and I really hope you do, please do remember the best way to support the channel for free is to subscribe. If you also hit the bell then you'll get notified of all my future content including the next two episodes as they are published and of course anything you see on my channel that you do like please also remember to give it the old imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts and if you'd like to make a more concrete contribution to the channel you can do that through any of my partner programs all of which are listed in the information box below okay well before we start having a look at the build itself, why don't we see what paints and products I've used to make this B26 Marauder in 148 scale from ICM. Okay, well, despite what the uh, instructions say, I'm making a start with the wheel well. So this is the top of the wheel well, the underside of the cabin, really. And I'm just going to put some extra thin glue in here. A bit of extra thin here. Just to um, keep that in place when it goes in. So this piece goes in here. Like so then the other side of the bay goes in here. Just make sure that's all right. That's good. The cockpit floor slides in like so. Rudder pedals go in here. So they sit like this. Make the pilot seat, this rear support goes, slots into the back first. And then on each side, there's an armrest. Bottom of the armrest hooks into the bottom of the seat like so. You can see the armrest sticks out sideways slightly. Don't be tempted to put it flush with this. Like a lot of ICM things, this is very fiddly until you actually put it together. And it kind of goes, oh yeah, of course that's the way it works. It looks really smart. Continue putting by putting the center console together. Some slightly, slightly tricky at times. And let's continue with the last part here. Yeah. 
Okay. This trim wheel goes on the side of the console. Okay. Then the whole thing slips onto the main control instrument panel, like so. We can put the chair pilot seat in when it's been painted, like so. With the instrument panel here and controls, I've put the decals on that came with the kit and it's all been painted black and varnished black and whatever. But it really needs some detail in here. As you can see, you can't, you, there is detail, but you can't see any of it. So I'm going to do a bit of dry brushing on this just to bring up some of the color or some of the, the edges rather to deal with the colors later. So I'm using a dry brush paint. It is dry brush paint. What you can do is just use any thick um, acrylic. Like I used to use the uh, dead white extra thick game paint from Vallejo, for example. But it's got to be thick. That's the, the key is it's got to be a thick paint because it's going to go on quite sparingly. But it's got to have enough density to really stand out. Okay. Just make it a bit more secure if I can. But you want a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of paint at any one time. Brush it on something else, like, like whatever support you've got holding it up the part, and just brush it on like that. Brush onto the edges, brush around here onto this control wheel. The edges of the piece will stand out as well. And we've got a control wheel here. I mean, this this paint will last so long because you use so little of it at any one time. You can see how all that detail just sort of pops out. Let's see if we can do it on here. Um, see, that's way, way, way too much. To get it really really there we go that's better so on the top here see so if i can show you it's holding place a bit better there we go you can see how all this detail starts pulling out it's such a good technique it's a really really good one to practice because it will help produce tons of detail in your kit. Now, once you've got all that detail, of course, then you can get to your references and see if any of these knobs were colored, for example, and things like that. But there we go, a bit of dry brushing to pull out some detail to a bit more, on this instrument panel. Well, I've added a few sort of dots of red and blue and yellow to this. I've no idea if they're supposed to be there or not, but they look pretty cool to me. So I'm happy enough. And that can now go into the cockpit. Right, so the instrument pa panel and center console instruments and controls can go into the cockpit like so.
starting with the fuselage here, there are these four holes that need to be drilled out. These are for the guns that go on the outside later on. Now I'm going to stop populating the cockpit with all the little bits and pieces that go in. But for the moment, I'm just going to do the ones that are going to be painted the same interior green as the rest of the cockpit because, or the whole of the aircraft actually, because um, I want to spray the interior. So I'll spray the interior first, then I can put in all the bits that are black or aluminium or whatever other colours there are. This big piece goes in here, it's like the uh, outside bomb rack if they're using smaller bombs. If you're ever unsure about exactly where a piece goes, do refer to the online build video, which is fantastic, made from the uh, CASC data for the kit. And uh, it really is very useful for showing you where things go if it's not immediately obvious from the kit itself. If you're going to have the bombs bay doors open, you need to put in these little clips as well. You can see between these like little double. Um, I should say that on reflection, I would leave these parts off now. I wouldn't put these hinges on. I'd leave them off, which enables you to put the bomb bay closed for spray painting later on. You can always put them on later before you actually fit the bomb bay doors. Three. The only exception to the rule of painting everything before beforehand is this channel here. This beam, if you like, whatever it is. I, I don't know. Someone who knows the Marauder better than I do, which is frankly going to be a lot of people, will know what this is. But the thing is, it goes underneath the uh, these rails, which is where the door, the rear door has sort of hooks back and slides up out the way when you want to open it. You can't paint this and then put the rail in. So I put the rail in first sprayed it green with everything else and then I'll just pick it out with some aluminium paint. I've painted the interior in olive green as directed. I've given it a coat of uh, varnish. Uh, I've got some of the things marked out in black as well, some of the parts that you put in. And so now I'm going to put a bit of wash into here to pick out some of these lines. I'm going to use a, a grey wash, dark grey wash rather than black. I just want to let it go around some of these ribs and give it a bit more detail when we uh, clean this up later on. I also dry brush over the black parts here and there's some um, some decals that go in there for the instruments as well later on, but I'll also do some uh, some dry brushing as well. Now I'm going to put the bombs onto the bomb racks. Um, the first thing to remember is that the bomb racks that are sort of short a bit at the top, the longer bit at the bottom. That's important. And then do check the instructions which way round they go. I know this one goes this way around because I've double checked. This is part 41 and part 41, the bombs go this way on. You'll notice instantly I painted the bombs, but I put some yellow bands around them just because I think they look better with yellow live round bands on than just plain um, olive green. There are these tiny, tiny little projections there that meet up with these tiny, tiny little holes here. I think they could have probably gone for a bit more oomph with those and then so if you don't want them cut them off rather than this which is going to be a bit tricky but anyway we'll put the bombs on and see how we go okay so that's what the bomb rack looks like when the bombs are loaded up you can actually feel them when you put the bombs on you just move it around so you do actually feel quite a positive click into place so maybe the pegs aren't as small as i thought they were i'll just do the other side then then i can start assembling the bomb bay itself and we can start assembling the parts of the bomb bay. These go in 
Only one way round the other end of this roof section has got a tab on so it fits into the other. Um, the other bulkhead of the bomb bay, we'll just put that in to hold that and tack that in place for a little while and then we'll do the rest of the bay. And what I'm doing is there's these two side walls here. They go, actually go in much later when you actually have put the aircraft fuselage together, these slots in. But I find if you just slot them in now, um, these are parts uh, F21 and 28, I think. But don't glue them in, just slot them into place, and it will help you get this much more sort of sorted out in terms of the, the sort of angles here. Then, of course, what you're going to do is put in the the beam at the bottom. Turn that way around. And then, then you're going to glue this into place, and then this is going to really solidify the whole thing. Then the bomb racks can go on. There's two very small locator pins here that the top goes into. Sorry, the, well, it's actually the bottom, is it? Because they're, they're sitting that way around. And then you can see there's this um, these tiny little nubs here. They sit on the outside of those. It gives an angle for the bombs. Um, really quite tricky to put in. I will hasten to add. So just take your time and it'll be fine. Then when it's set, remember to take off these two parts I use to hold everything in place while I'm doing it getting it all level and everything then just put the frames through the sides it'll click into place and that's the bomb bay in place then for a cockpit take the cockpit uh, construction at the front here and slot onto the rear bulkhead here and glue them together There's a bulkhead that goes in here, like so. There's a rear bulkhead that goes in here. Now let me see which way around it goes. Okay. There's a rear bulkhead that goes in here. So, and the cockpit slides into position in here. Like this. Going backwards now, there's this piece of flooring that goes in here. This is going to support the waste guns you can see i put the little mounts on painted everything green done a bit of um, panel washing and also a bit of dry brushing with some aluminium again not entirely sure why i did all that because you're not going to see any of it but yeah it's what it is this is the first piece that hasn't actually just sort of naturally just sat where it's supposed to go oddly Anyway, we'll see what we can do with it. I'm pretty sure it goes on the bottom of that. Like there. Onto that. There, like that. And we'll glue that into place first and then worry about the back end. So, there we go. It just sits in like this. So we can put the machine guns on the two. Um, supports there then there's a bulkhead that goes here then we can do the rear turret for the rear turret the guns mount onto the support like so there's little there's little tabs here so I'm getting it done properly Let's stop messing around there we go little tab goes in like that that holds the gun roughly in place. So. Right, 
the moment you've put the cross piece on here the sorry the glass is ready to go on and we can see that it's slightly asymmetrical so there's a connection at the top and a connector almost at the bottom um, so that's the way around I'm going to do it almost at the bottom guns slot in through there then the glass connects to those parts of the mount I showed you earlier and then just get them into position like so now I, I've used a clear canopy glue you know, crystal magic glue um, because these parts are going to be clear I'm not sure which parts are going to be clear and which parts are not so I don't want to risk if these are supposed to be clear um, fogging up the whole thing with a slop load of extra thin or uh, regular polystyrene cement so I'm going to have to leave these to dry for a long time because these PVAs do take like, a day to set up properly but anyway that's pretty much done and so Whilst that's all setting up, I will start making the mid upper turret. Uh, these things do go together very well, they go together very straightforwardly, generally speaking. And um, fit is very nice, so it's good to work with. And then there's a Then there's what looks, I think this is probably a foot rest. Something sits on the back here. The guns go into the top of the turret uh, this way around. You can see there's like a little triangular thing there that fits into a little recess there. Like so. And the guns are the same angle that way. We do it that way, and then just bring them together a little bit, like that. So they're actually pointing roughly in the same direction. And then just uh, top off the little bits of black here that's come from cutting off the frame. And with the mounting ring and footrest on the front, you can then put the seat for the mid upper gunner on as well that's uh, not a great connection but it will be okay then when all the pieces are dry run a bead of um, canopy glue around the base slot the guns through the holes and just put into place and it fits perfectly it's a nice looking turret there's this piece of work here that has to go in. I don't know why it has to go in so late in the build, but it does. It sits there, and there's a slot on the wall for it to sit into. I'm guessing it sits on top of the... Now, the instructions say to put the support for the turret in with the turret on top i'm not going to do it. what i'm going to do is put this in first get this settled and then when it's painted i will put the turret in but not before then so the turret support sits like that so it's into the bulkhead there sits there against the side of the aircraft perfect the rear turret goes into this plot and you can see there's a little square tab that goes in just underneath the window there that's the part of the sighting system and then the rest of the turret just sort of sits in place there it'll be held up when the other half of the fuselage goes in that i think is everything i want to put into this part of the fuse this half of the fuselage I've already done the other half of the fuselage. This just needs to be squeezed up and tightened up because that's going to cause a problem. Otherwise, there we go. That needs to go there. 
bomb bays, bomb doors, everything's done there, cockpit, everything's ready. So I can now slide the other half of the fuselage over the spars and hope it all goes together. I'm going to be putting on some more clear parts as well, like the canopy and whatever. So I've got this masking set and I've got a double sided mask. So what I'll do is I'll um, mask off the inside of the cockpit transparencies and in fact all of them completely mask the outside spray the interiors with the relevant colors before they go on to so to then take the mask off then put them onto the aircraft and then they're, they're done then for later so i'll go around the aircraft putting on the various spots for the small windows and i'll mask the interior of the large transparencies Make sure you drop in these little windows for the tail gunner before you assemble the tail itself. A little bit tricky to put in, if I'm honest. The tail plane sits on the back of the fuselage, like so. Then the tail fin sits on top and kind of locks it into place like this then we can fit the rudder into the fin the rudder like all the other control surfaces here comes as two pieces it does need a little bit of coaxing in because it's got an angle on the base so the uh it's a little bit tricky to get it get it around this little bit here see that that angle piece that comes up um, at the base that uh, there's going to be a, another clear piece here for the gunner but you know so as soon as you get it over like the, the little click around it, it it's fine you can try to sort of go from the sideways and it's engaging it and slewing it around i guess that goes on very nicely and then again elevators are two piece elevators and uh, just put some glue on the pieces here a couple of tiny bits of glue on the studs that hold them in place and then they just clip in like so one on each side obviously under here just put this panel in this is um an empty space where you can put the weight icm suggests 50 grams I've actually put 60 in just, just because I can, and because I like to make sure it's overdone. The canopy, I've um, masked and sprayed the interior with the interior green, then remembered to take all the masks off before the canopy goes on the outside like that. And I'll set it in place with some PVA, some clear PVA. And then there's two small panels here again i'll just put those on in with pva and the last bit that's going on today is this rear panel glass for the rear turret like so again with a bit of clear pva glue there it is a labor of love for sure but very achievable and immensely enjoyable. I really, really love this kit. Now, if you've liked the video, please remember the best way to support the channel is to subscribe. And if you hit the bell, you'll be notified of all my future projects as they turn up and the next two episodes of this build. And of course, anything you see on my channel that you like, please do remember, give it the old imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. Thank you so very much for watching today. Hope to see you again very soon. Take good care now and goodbye.